Welcome back. Welcome back to Pass the Isle. I'm Kevin. I'm Meg. And today's show, let's talk about how we handle rejection. Hmm. So each person handles rejection differently. Okay, you go first. Mm, yeah, like every time I spark an idea and then uh, it always gets rejected. <laughs> or Why do you say that? Um, just because it, it's, I would say it's more when a person has an idea or when I have an idea, it, it's always considering myself because, you know, we're always self-interested. We're always coming from, uh, just thinking about, you know, our own personal goals. Yeah. And I should have covered that. And, uh, yeah, it's like, um, during, our conversations if it's an idea right yeah. it's always coming from you yeah. basically so when your ideas aren't being considered uh, like yourself right um you often will feel like oh yeah it's not considering me so that's why uh, you reject it and and that you kind of have to like throughout what I've learned, right, is like uh, throughout our relationship, when it comes to rejection, you have to kind of just think it through on uh, like being the person on the other side as well, accept that you will be rejected throughout your life. Like almost most of the time, like if you're making a sale, if you're pitching a product, um, out of the 10 people you pitched it to, only two bought into your product but most of them rejected you it's, mm -hmm. and you have to kind of accept that and and life is like that are you saying this to yourself or um yeah i'm just saying that's how i accept rejection except rejection <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay i think i'm either on too many or something but i didn't catch everything that you said and yeah, a lot of like it sounds very circular I think. so how do you handle rejection uh-huh yeah when you present your ideas and i was like no or when you yeah propose an idea many times in our business yeah you'll be like uh, or i will be like uh, i don't i'm not seeing you know where you're trying to present or mm -hmm. i'm not seeing any proofs and or things like that yeah. So, but then how do you like yourself handle that when you're being rejected? Mm. But I thought I said you go first. <laughs> no, I went first already. <laughs> I already said how I handled rejection. Okay. So, so I'm like on a lot of CBD right now. Okay. Um, so you, if I reject your idea. No, if I rejected your idea, how do you take it? How do you handle it? No, I'm trying to clarify how you accept okay. rejection, right? Yeah. Because we've been going through it. And the reason why I think you bring this up is because we're, we're taking a big step forward to buy a roaster. And then, uh, like, we've been talking a lot about, like, where are we going to put it? Or yeah. Where is it going to be? And then... I think the, just the most recent example to ground our conversation mm -hmm. uh, is when you were like, oh, you could put your roaster in the office because we had separated our offices. Yeah. And then I was like, no, I don't know how I rejected it, but I rejected the idea. Mm -hmm. And then I felt your energy change right away. Like, it's just a suggestion or something like this. Yeah. Like you were hurt. And I was like, eh. But <laughs> I was not like, eh, like I don't care. I was just like, I see how you're trying to reverse this change. Yeah. That's how it felt to me. Cause I've been, I'm now not there where you are in mm -hmm. the office when it was really easy for you to just, um, have more control over the space. Yeah. And then when I was like, finally, when I was like, Oh, I want, I want to move up here mm -hmm. and that's how it's going to be. Yeah. And then I, I remember when I told you that I wanted to move my desk, like your face, your expression was so crazy. <laughs> how was it? You know it? how it was? No, I don't, you were like, I don't look at myself. You were like that. <laughs> you were like that. I was like, whoa, <laughs> interesting. So yeah. to me, I was like, that was a very, you don't emote very much, but when I told you I was going to move, yeah, like you had some weird, crazy expression. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, okay, interesting. So <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to move upstairs and then whatever. And th so when 
going back to my thing is like when you said, oh, you could put your roaster right here. And like you keep wanting me to like come back to this area. Well, I was trying to find a way that will make it easier to kind of damper the amount of smell. I was figuring it out mm -hmm. where we can just wheel it directly to the backyard. So there was like many things going to mind, especially when that table's like six. I know, but like all those other suggestions that yeah. I rejected or whatever. Yeah. The, this is the one where y your energy was the most like hurt or something. And it was right yeah. after we made, I don't know, that's what I felt. I don't, I mean, I didn't feel hurt. It was just an idea. And I was just finding the best way for whatever that needs to be solved during that moment of if, when we get that roaster no i'm yeah. just saying that's how you f that's how you felt i'm not telling you how you felt that's how yeah. it felt to me so oh, i was that's like how you, yeah, yeah so that's why i was like okay so um that's why i was thinking about those were examples of a rejection of an idea mm -hmm. or something like that and it just felt like again like what you said um you rejected because we're thinking about our own um or you presented that idea but i rejecting it and me by rejecting it, I was like putting you down in a way. I see. So I could see like a uh, sort of parallel what you're saying. I was like, well, obviously when, yeah, like when anyone gets rejected, they're going to feel down. Yeah. But how do you handle it? So how do you handle when you get rejected? Um, and it normally it's not like it depends on the situation. Yeah. Like, so situations of every time you present an idea in the business, in the business, yeah. How do you handle it when your idea um, is not taken into action? Well, there were phases of how I handled it, which I think come back every now and again because you have a habitual way of thinking about things, right? So, but yeah, let's rejection start with of an idea. Yeah, like step say one. in the past that I said that I always like how I dealt with it then and how I deal with the same thing now is uh, before it would be like hurtful but to my feelings like to my ego and then um but i know it's a good change to make right so i had to address like well i know it's a good suggestion and i shouldn't i shouldn't stop suggesting it because those were all the ideas that were you know not approved i guess or whatever before the ones that we do now a lot of them so i had to just had to like change my way of how i'm presenting it um in terms of rejection it's like okay well that that path didn't work i know it's still a good idea so i should still keep presenting it but how do i do that without getting rejected so to me it was like trying to be creative so how will you do it without getting rejected are you like fear of rejection all the time yeah there's all the time like a fear like with me mm -hmm. especially with you because for some reason i um I depend a lot upon your approval or your validation, mm. which now I find that I don't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to, I mean, it's great to get it. And that's what I'd say. That is my love language to get approval, to get validation, words of affirmation. And that's why it's so powerful for me that yeah. it like, well, why do the words yes or no affect you so? Because yeah. that's my love language, right? So if you say no in my love language, it's like, no, I reject you completely. But you have to, like, that's your primitive mind thinking. So to me, I'm just like, okay, so it's just another path that is closed. And there's maybe another path if I wish to pursue it. If I wish to, I don't need to. Mm -hmm. So if I wish to pursue a certain change, then I will make that change, like, you know. But I don't feel it like, oh, it's missing or it's regrettably not mine. Like, I, I had the decision now to, like, make the cutoff or... Just decide for myself if I want to open or close that door. Okay. Those new paths, right? Yeah. Because I feel like rejection is only one path. There's many paths to A and B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there any, like, if, can you recall any interesting events? Uh, and it doesn't have to, it can just be within our marriage. Mm -hmm. Um where it was very difficult for you uh -huh. to accept that rejection. Hmm. I think they're not really things. Let's see if I like try to just search my memory bank, like business wise, 
is probably the most is probably the one that y- you'll be able to like understand me on because there was a lot of emotional rejection stuff, right? Yeah, but I want to learn more about the marriage part, not the business talks and the ideas. Well, because it, I feel like the business has trained me to act this way in our marriage, right? Yeah, but I want to see some. I want to learn some examples from like like in the marriage within the marriage, uh, maybe things that you presented within our marriage, uh-huh. but then I got defensive and defensive is an act of rejection so right um yeah well just recently was like oh let's talk about um like the timing of when we talk timing when we talk Mm -hmm. but you wrote in an email though but you drew it all out no that's for work right okay like when we talk about our marriage sometimes it comes up did we talk about this already but like sometimes it comes up at an inconvenient time for you Oh, yeah, we did speak about that like two right. episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. So that when you're like, oh, I don't have time or I'm editing that that's a rejection mm-hmm. that happens often. And now I was like, OK, after we made a lot of these um, new changes within the home, like the energy, I feel is a lot better. I feel like I'm starting to have my own space, which is changing the way I think, which is changing the way like I expect and acceptance and acceptance yeah. as well yeah for sure because i was like okay i accept that we're not going to be able to work like we are right now mm-hmm. and then to finish that sentence with and that's okay like <laughs> and that's okay should just like be at the end of every sentence in our minds because it it just really dispels any like pent-up emotion or repressed feelings or a- anger <coughs> or something like that and so i was like Um, I remember I was sitting here and I was just trying to like find ways how we could arrange our desks because our we already knew it wasn't gonna. It was a box. (laughs) It was a box and And it was small. Small and small box. Two of us and we have both very strong personalities and how we work. We're both very particular. It's like we were trying to force this in there for way too long and it's funny we already knew that moving in we knew that we were trying to be wise to that and then we just forgot because work like we're like let's just get the desk in there we'll worry about it later we have to get back to work remember Mm -hmm. so again that's a common theme that we often prioritize work before anything else which is a rejection of our marriage when we accept 110 50 percent of the business (laughs) like you're rejecting everything else yeah friends marriage us time whatever you know so that's that's a really interesting theme like with us as well but um, yeah, so when we made that change, um, it was like, cool, we could we could like get back in our own little bubbles again. Because yeah. before it was just becoming like, here's your bubble, here's mine. It was like, like every day, you know, and sometimes I can't control when you're like all up in my bubble and the same thing with me on you. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's always like, I don't have time for this or why are you doing this right now? Yeah. So now we have this new setup where. Well, yeah, I accepted like we're different and that's okay, Right. So I finished the sentence with and that's okay, And we're not going to have our desk in the same area, but that's okay. We're in the same house. So we just need to set up better structure for us. Well, I mean, I love the setup just because like sometimes you'll be talking to your mother, your sister or whatever. And I'm like right there. And yeah, it like kind of messes with like while I'm answering email or when you're answering email and then I just kind of choose to like kind of talk to you. Mm-hmm. So it it, it kind of reminds me of college back in the day when they stick you like with another person in a dorm yeah. and you don't know that person. You don't know their living habits, yeah. but then you're sharing this tiny small space, yeah. right? And you're like, holy crap, like, oh, uh, there's something about this person that I don't like, yeah. right? Yeah. Like traits, characteristic, whatever. Their living habits yeah. annoys you. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it felt the same way in that small room. Um, I still, you know, I still like that the fact that you have a door to close off, but then I'm still open. So I'm still kind of thinking of a way to like close that door off because you can do that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's our home. Like it was funny how we have this huge space to ourselves when we're not, we're not maximized. We're still living yeah. mentally. We've imprisoned ourselves and within this weird thing that I'm not really sure where it yeah. came from. So it's just, you know, with me, I was like, 
okay, cool. Like I'm figuring out it doesn't have to overlap, overlap. We're making it that way. We're yeah. choosing to always think of, oh, like I'll hear it in your in your speaking a lot. It's like, oh, when you you know doing a business and running a marriage, like you're you're not creating boundaries for yourself in your own mind about yeah. This is my marriage. This is my business. This is my me time. These are my friends. Like, and just giving them healthy boundaries, mm-hmm. right? So that they can all kind of like live comfortably together in your mind. Cause otherwise, if it's all jumbled and they're sleeping yeah. on top of each other, like everybody's mad. Everybody's yeah. not getting your full attention. And um, that's what I was learning when I just did five minutes research about feng shui and yeah. like oh how am i supposed to do it like let's you know and surrendering to that process like it's okay that we're not going to be in the same room it doesn't mean we can't be even better communicators right? yeah so well yeah i mean for one thing uh prior to uh moving into this house we originally thought of getting a live work loft yeah. so it was properly a uh, place designated downstairs right that was shut off to the home that it will be designated to work and everything upstairs is just home but that didn't work out just because of many things um so we decided a home is a home right but then now when we move in here i still feel like uh yeah business has taken over this home um it's not a home home and yeah it's it's like a big live work loft (laughs) basically yeah basically yeah so i feel like that home where we feel like home is our master room and that's the only place or our living room i yeah. mean where we watch tv we and watch everything. tv yeah that, we keep that pretty sacred yeah like we don't work but there. then i would say the business still owns about 80 percent of this house mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it will like in your mind like that's in how my you mind. think about it as well because when i come home right well like we go when we both come home we go straight to our computers yeah yeah and we check emails and we Mm -hmm. answer emails yeah but i is like you know now that we're aware to it i think it's um like what i told you like um i emailed you a list of how i want to be communicated how i want to be approached right yeah and i was like cool finally i'm i'm standing up and setting an expectation which i can thank for tony who helped me uh so much because i was like losing my shit i was just like i feel like I'm losing um, energy. That's how I felt. I just felt like really drained. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I was able to figure that out and set my own expectation and not feel like, not feel hurt about it. Yeah. You know, and that's, I think that's the beauty of the whole like pulling out arrows thing. Finally, you get to a spot where you're just like, no, this is just how I'd like to be approached. And then there's, that's it. Like you stop trying to focus on all the bad shit is Mm. why you're putting out this you know like to me in my own like thinking about how i'm presenting new changes yeah it's like i don't have to be heard about it all the time if i'm still heard about it then okay wake up you're still heard about it go address it go pull the arrow out but if the arrow's out why are you acting like that right Mm -hmm. so to me like that's why the changes can be made now like i feel like in my approach or the way i feel about things like i'm not as hurt anymore like i don't have to focus so much on that feeling of lack like mm-hmm. oh i'm not getting enough of whatever so i was like cool like and then you responded well and i was like cool let, like let's just move like let's just move forward i'm tired yeah. of feeling stuck you know and stuck in that room down there where i have to like hear all the things that i don't want to hear or whatever and not work the way that i want to work yeah so yeah it's really great to have my own space like the moment i made that decision like i felt lighter i felt um like oh cool like it's gonna be it's gonna be better you know like our work communication because i felt like that was a big source of um strife like so, what, something that would always like break the, yeah the going last back straw. to rejection right yeah um i remember i did present why don't we we have a space in orange right why didn't we uh and this i totally got rejected by you know your 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 lifestyle kind of coming over and saying no like i prefer just being at home uh in my comfortable zone but then i was suggesting an idea to separate the work we'll stay at work Mm -hmm. and then the home will become entirely a home 
Yeah. Yeah. So let's get back to that idea. Like, um, can you remind me, like, is your perspective changed, changed about this? If if you wanted to consider that? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Okay. I see the value in it like I did before, like I explained to you. Yeah. But I think even then when I answered you about that was I was dealing with a lot of the that I'm now healing right now, which is the anxiety of being out. Okay. So like that was a different me, I guess. You asked me before. Um, but I still feel that I have the ability to not separate now that I have this door. Like I can close the door and I can walk away. And I feel that the reason why we're still having trouble is that you haven't closed it. Mm -hmm. And you're very much like when an email comes in, like it is your tendency to remind me of work when we're in the kitchen and when we're in the living room. And I'm always trying to block that shit out because I'm like, man, I'm eating right now or, you know, for business stuff, marriage stuff. I'll be I'm all ears. Yeah. I like stop what I'm doing and I pay attention. Right. But business stuff, I'm like, I'm really like tuned out. I'm like, why are you telling me now? Like in my head, I'm like, you're supposed to write it down. <laughs> like you're supposed to email me. And that's what I'm thinking, you know, when you approach me about business. So I think for you, it, I think it's hard because you haven't made the separation in your mind. And maybe, yeah, you should go get this freaking door for you. Like, let's do it. Let's mm -hmm. make it exactly the way you need it to be. I'm all for that. And that, you know. I will need to knock when I enter your space, mm -hmm. right? Whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because you're just open. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we could do that, you know, like, yeah. and that's what I need to know. It's like uh, you, you verbalizing your feelings, like, you know, hey, I don't feel closed off. Like, let, can I do that over here too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That's, I'm all for it. Big so, but yeah, I mean, but let's... Talk about why you rejected the idea of, of orange. Now? Of orange, yeah. No, I mean presently, how you feel. Uh, you you said that you still feel like you're anxious, yeah, of or, or uncomfortable yeah. of traveling to a studio to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you want to utilize? I that already space? came from that world. Yeah. You know, the way that I have designed my life is mm -hmm. that I wanted to work from home. Yeah. And I know I would have discipline enough to separate it. Yeah. Because I'm really good at like, when I'm done, I'm done. Yeah. I'll address it tomorrow. Unless yeah. it's an emergency. I don't touch it. I don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about it. I see a big difference in that in you. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, I feel like I'm capable because I know what I knew what I was asking for. When I was doing my commute and shit like that. Like, I was like, never fucking again, man. Am I doing this shit? So if I have 100% control of my life, which I do, I'm going to choose not to go to orange. I value what you're saying. I value what you're saying. I respect what you're saying of having separation. But I feel like I'm disciplined enough to do that here. I see. Yeah. And so when you approach me, it's like, well, you're, you cannot separate yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're like, come on, let's go. But I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to go. Yeah. You know, I'm um, like, I understand that you need the separation, but I think you're so used to me doing things with you mm -hmm. that you just expect it. Yeah. And when I disagree, it's like, why? <laughs> well, like, well, I, I know, still, I, have I also feel like I, have um, reasons, you know? I, I totally would work in orange. Yeah. If we lived a lot closer. Yeah. <laughs> like, the commute, you want to deal with that shit? Like, I, I just don't want to deal with the, uh, with the commute. Mm hmm. So I feel like I'm struggling with myself being in this house because I was like, anywhere I go, I'm so far from everything. Yeah, yeah. So I feel trapped in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But totally, if where if we still lived in Yorba Linda or anywhere close, I would totally just work at Orange. But it's, you didn't do it before. We never had Orange <laughs> in oh, Yorba we Linda. Yeah. Oh, I thought we did. No. We totally moved here and then got Orange. Oh. Yeah. But you couldn't work. At we just Fullerton. moved into Orange last year, and Fullerton was only fifteen minutes for you. Um, so it's kind of like it was same. T well. It's small for the fact that there is no. Well, at that time there was no like thinking of that mindset. We oh, never worked on our marriage. We never worked on, yeah, you yeah. know, separation. Knowing all these things oh, until we yeah, got yeah, here. We didn't. So now these conversations mm -hmm. are are being brought up. And now you're like more aware. Like, now oh, I'm more aware. Yeah. Like. 
I would totally do that yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> if it's too late now. Yeah, of course. It's too late now. Well, and I mean, so, so get, let's get the doors. I don't you know? think the door is going to solve the problem. Really? Yeah. You I need to be removed. I think I need to be removed from, uh, yeah, it, I have to see that they're both different worlds. Uh-huh. The marriage world, your home is your home, your work is your work. Yeah. Yeah. I see. And me, yeah, I mean, me finding... Yeah, uh, it's expensive, man. Like, but, <laughs> no, but yeah. it's the goal. That yeah, yeah. It allows me to push harder through life to get what I want. Got you. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, then yeah, I won't try. Yeah. Yeah. But to solve the problem, I'm not going to rent a studio out here just to <laughs> work outside. No. Mm, but you thought of one. Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Orange will always be orange mm -hmm. because orange is a good goal. I do want to move back to Orange County. Orange County. Yeah. Not orange. Orange County. Yeah. Yeah. But anywhere in Orange County will be close proximity to orange. Yeah. I got yeah. you. I see. Cool. But, um, but yeah, if you do see like some sort of reaction, right, mm -hmm. as you're talking to me about separation of work and our daily life, right? Yeah. I'm juggling with myself that I'm stuck here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not you. Yeah. It's me. So are you going to do anything about it? Like you're going to try to help yourself out? Well, yeah. Work my ass off to get out. I mean, in the meantime. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, yeah. I mean, it gone, it gone better. I would have to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely better that we separate our workspace. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, yeah, the direction that I'm facing, being able to see uh, the environment versus seeing a white wall, yeah, it, it helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's like my mentality, like my mentality or just uh, how I view things have been a lot clearer mm. in positioning the dust that way. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Feels like, um, I'm like, oh. But it also <laughs> feels less cluttered. It feels like just everything just flows well. Yeah, the energy yeah. can't get stuck somewhere yeah. or yeah, fester. Yeah. Yeah, it feels better. So, yeah, props to that and researching uh, the best direction for both uh, for both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. At least we solved one of your problems is, yeah, you got a separation. You got to close your door on your own time. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. I just need to work my way up. Yeah. Yeah. I see. What else are you going to do to, well, we're painting your room. I, yeah. I feel I feel like the reason why I wanted to paint it was to create some sort of separation. Yeah. Um, at least like displaying wise or visually wise, like there is a separate area. I think, yeah, I mean that, yeah, automatically when I walk upstairs and this was different. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely brought a different world. Yeah. So since we originally worked in there together, it, everything still looks the same and yeah. once we change it up to make it look different i think my perspective yeah you need change. like new shiny things it's just something new now yeah yeah and then we're doing it the same color as like the color this color of work mm -hmm. like the workspace not work but work the workspace that way you can kind of like visually step in and out yeah. of your workspace and hopefully not just helpfully create a boundary for you yeah yeah well yeah well so today's show kind of feels more of not about rejection this is about how we uh separate ourselves mm -hmm. from work and our daily life and your tactics that you've learned mm -hmm. uh how it influences our lifestyle currently right yeah that's what it kind of feels like that we're talking about here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's what's been going on like even the coffee like yeah coffee is separated now we're it's keeping like, it separate so it's not overtaking the kitchen overtaking the living room i like yeah. i still have some stuff there but it's that's definitely uh, like a goal you mm -hmm. know like okay cool we're gonna have more space at some point so let's just keep working on this yeah and then um i'm also going to be painting that area where we can section it off and just like make have everything have its own little space yeah 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 cool. yeah i mean yeah when i'm working out in there i'm not bothered by it and it just in the corner yeah everything fits well yeah 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 what's interesting what i found um and i don't know like i don't know it'd be cool just to like talk about it with you so with the roaster we haven't bought it yet right 
and there was like maybe three times <laughs> that you asked me, let's go buy it now, right? And then I'd be like, not exactly enthusiastic. And also like, I still don't believe you kind of feeling, kind of vibe too. And then underneath that, um, which is like, oh, do I believe in myself? Mm -hmm. Like, am I scared also? Yeah. Is that why I'm not? Why are you scared? Enthusiastic, right? I think it's my own. What fears are you facing? Because the roasting is all you, and we figure this out that it's all right. you. Right. Like for me, I'm just uh, funneling your passion. Mm -hmm. Like I'm allowing you to be a free spirit and roasting, and I'm not going to be like barging in and saying, "Hey, like you yeah, know." Yeah, yeah, no. So, I think I think with me, my fear is, yeah, is your commitment to to it and then will i be able to lead when you're doubting like can i prove can i well can i prove my worth yeah. in sales like in real proof that would be for you mm -hmm. well no no like so i accepted right uh -huh. that it's purely passion for you yeah right and we're going to work out our own pace mm -hmm. together so if you're uncomfortable with uh, the pace that I kind of projected or like kind of just put it out there for you. And yeah. if you're like, uh, I'm not c comfortable with that yet. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, because it's, it's purely your passion. Yeah. And when I spoke to our friend Tony and he's like, yeah, that's Meg's thing, you know, mm -hmm. allow her to, uh, feel good that she's doing what she loves. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Like I want, her to feel like when i get her that roaster when or you know is our money at the end of end of the day so when we're purchasing this roaster to funnel your passion right you should feel good that you own it and that it's completely yours yeah yeah, yeah. and um yeah and just don't think about it's a business uh, yeah. don't yeah don't I think, think I'm about it a hard time with so, that. so you know how it'd be like uh chi are you gonna feel like pressured that you know if i don't make sales or a certain like we're gonna feel no. pressured so i'm like keep testing you that's why i feel like oh why do i not believe him still and i think it's just that's the hurt that's the hurt that i haven't addressed well it's because we you're you're forward. uh thinking about the past and you feel like the past is going to come back and yeah, yeah. bite you right yeah so I'm not used to it yet. Like we're making all these really cool changes about like communicating better or clearly and writing shit out. So now you stuff. just need to accept it. Now, yeah. Now yeah. I was like, I was like, how come I'm having trouble with it? Right. Yeah. And then um, yesterday I started reading my book and look up because I, I hurt my hips two days ago. And I said, why am I dealing with this? Like, yeah. I thought I did everything. And then I thought I addressed all the emotional stuff. So I was like, what's the physical stuff? So I've been doing that. And so both are necessary for healing. But like the thing that it read for for hips, a oh, probable cause, it means that you don't want to move forward in life. The hips support everything in life and you don't want to move forward. So you have fear. So I have fear. That's why I said be less. I said, am I ready? I'm ready. Am I ready? Right. I'm ready to roast. Like yeah. I'm ready to. to uh, well, it's to scary. It, right. I mean, it's scary. I mean. When, I was just facing yeah, my own fear. You're about facing it. your own fears, and then that's why I texted you. I said, "No, I get it. I'm. I want it. I'm ready for this." And I texted you. I said, "Let's get the roaster tonight." There was you know. similar situations where you said, "Raise your prices. Mm -hmm. Raise it." Yeah. I'm like, uh, "I don't uh, know. Yeah. I, I really don't know <laughs> if uh, yeah, you know you so people like, believe uh, in me." Yeah, and you you felt the same way. You're yeah. like, "Do people believe in my what I roast? <laughs> yeah. Do they believe in what I put out there?" No, I was, I was yeah. like, "Can I do it? Can I learn this new thing?" Like, yeah, it was already semi difficult to learn the hot top, right? And I was just doubting, like I was fearing, like, "Am I ready to learn this? This is the next big step. This so, is the next big step. If I so, learn this, I yeah. can learn the twenty kilo machine. Like, D that's don't what even saying, think about you know? the damn twenty kilo. You know? Think about." you know, what you're going to get. Yeah. And that's all, right? Like, don't think about 20 levels from what you're thinking, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like, I'm like you in that way. Th yeah. Think about your video game. Yeah. You're, when Grinding. you, when you turn it on, <laughs> right, you're, you're just playing it to have fun, mm -hmm. right? And then the next level you beat it, and then you go to the next level and you're like, cool, yeah. I'm in the next level. Yeah. It's like hardly noticing your progression is the best thing. 
but not thinking about where you got to be. Because when you think where you got to be, that's where you feel the pressure. Yeah, pressure. And I was feeling pressure. Yeah. But it was from my own like insecurity of like, oh, am I ready to do it? And then I had to like but, sit there and really ask myself. Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to ask yourself yeah. um, and have a self-reflection. But, you know, it's just know that every time you tell me about if my hair is nice and going out for a meeting or going out to a wedding and you're like nobody cares <laughs> nobody cares how you look right <laughs> nobody cares in the end they don't care if your work is good yeah they don't <laughs> i mean obviously they want to care that my work is good yeah. if they're investing in well, that's it. what i'm saying your work is already good yeah you showing up is like bow on top you know? yeah but same same deal with you and your yeah. self-reflection is that uh people care of the end product that they're going to receive that yeah it smells and tastes like coffee right <laughs> yeah. but other than that they yeah. don't care where you work from yeah what roaster you have yeah right mm -hmm. but they they are proud to be a follower of you yeah. because you educate them you make them feel like home and it feels like it's a family right yeah. so that's the ultimate feeling they want to feel yeah but at the end end of it all like they they're just satisfied yeah. 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 Thank you. I mean, that's what I went through yeah. <laughs> while you're away. But I went through many things as well. And I didn't tell you that um, I was that I had to speak to Tony. I was like, yeah, like seven G's is a lot to try pay this thing off. And for me, like I like throughout our relationship, I always felt like I was in debt. You were in debt as well. Like you felt that and we were both. On, I had real debt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Real <laughs> debt. But we were on the same boat, right? Like I was responsible for debt that wasn't even mine. Oh, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm like, no more debt. Fuck debt. Like yeah. no more. Like any credit card that we have, like throughout our relationship was like all paid off. Like everything we got paid off. Like. So why did you open a new one? Huh? Why did you open a new one? Well, because then I thought like, okay, now we have responsibilities. It, it, this is something else, right? Mm -hmm. This this can be uh, a slow progression of paying off because we still got property tax. We still got uh, marketing expenses for uh, things that will help us uh, make money, mm -hmm. right? So it makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like we're losing anything. That's why I opened something else uh because there was like no responsibility for the next 18 months in a way that there's no interest mm. and it just made more sense mm. like if you can cut it into small increments but still pay it off within 18 months is not a big deal and then you said you made me an authorized user yeah i wonder if that if i open a new line is that like me opening a new line no Oh, okay. Because my I just got an email. They were like, oh, your score decreased. Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay, so it did open. <laughs> I was like, huh. But that's no, great. I, that's great. I don't great. know if that's true, but like, I was like, just thinking about what you were just saying. I was just yeah. like, oh, is that why I got an email today saying my score decreased? Because I'm an authorized user? Does that mean it's a real Which is cool. Credit? I mean. Yeah, I don't care. Because now like, oh, you can okay. yeah. build it up. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I was just connecting the dots. It's yeah. all good. I don't use credit. Yeah. I mean, barely. Who cares? Yeah. But yeah, that's awesome that it worked, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. What did I ask you? Uh, your score decreased. <laughs> oh, no, no. And before that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. My brain is all loopy. Yeah. But um, yeah, you, you were just saying. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. So we were talking about the roaster and. Uh, yeah, any any other fears that you stumbled across? Uh, that was it. I mean, did you I, did you get this fear when we got the hot top? No. Well, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was just like, oh, it's it's up to me to learn it. I yeah. just felt responsible for it. I remember you had this conversation mm -hmm. with prior to getting the hot top. You know, it's a commitment. It's yeah. not only it's a it's a huge commitment on my part to learn the way that should be learned. i mean you love it right yeah i love it so yeah you're committed you love it yeah yeah i think it's just like like if i can make the analogy you going down a, a deeper wave mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it's fucking awesome but yeah can i do it yeah 
<laughs> so yeah, I mean, you're going to eat crap yeah. along the way. Yeah. Which I, is. I kept trying to like just ask you and make sure and kind of like test your how you answer my question, which was like, am I going to are we going to feel pressure? Let me ask you this. Are you afraid of failing? I'm not afraid of failing. I'm Are you afraid sure? of what you're going to do. No, like screw fail. like forget about me right no, now. No, that's Are, it. I'm yeah. not afraid to fail. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay. But I feel so strongly that I will feel guilty if I don't deliver something to you that well, is deemed successful. No, like so now I kind of broke the ties, broke the string that it's purely your passion. It's definitely not mine, but I get the kick out of it just the business side mm -hmm. and that's what i'm passionate about and then like if, if the you, business doesn't do but, well though but i'm just saying when you're ready at our own pace that we'll be discussing you know like when you're ready that you got something yeah mm -hmm. then we move forward yeah well my i guess my underlying question that is my i guess final fear <laughs> yeah final fear is if this business fails mm-hmm are you still going to be with okay with it then? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm going to make it. Because that one is the one I just didn't believe yeah. when I keep asking you. Because your fear is, is it going to work? Yeah. Is it going to be successful? You know, yeah. that's not my fear. My fear but is you, the person that you become on the aftermath when it's not successful. You're just not a fun person mm -hmm. to be around. Everything is bad. Everything is negative. Everything's poison or toxic or no, yeah. don't do that again. Like, <laughs> so I, that's the thing I think that's underneath it all. And I don't want that for you. And I don't want to have to deal with it. Yeah. You know? Well, so here's the thing. Like, I don't think you need to worry about that part because now Think of it, coffee's your passion, right? Mm -hmm. Me working out this strategic part of marketing and strategizing and all that, that's business. Yeah. The failure part happens in the business, not what, you, what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Because your passion will always remain your passion, yeah. passion of roasting. You can't fail at you it. You can't fail at it because you get to choose if you want to share it or not. That's what I'm saying. So it sounds like you've just placed upon yourself a bunch of pressure because the business is the only place that you can fail. Yeah. It'll be my failing if I don't properly help you communicate and address But it, why you're going to have a problem with that if it fails. Yeah. Right? And it's very possible it could. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, because it's my passion. So I kind of have less at stake. Yeah. What I'm worried about is you. <laughs> Well, let's not worry about that because there's no point. But we're that's not even your there. Denial. Yeah. That's your rejection of me addressing you. Yeah, but I'm no, but we're not there. It's too futuristic. Nothing is happening at this oh, point. Oh, I thought that's your language, future. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's way futuristic because you don't even have the roaster in your hands and yeah. we're not even a legitimate, like, established roasting company. So. so you don't know how you'll react, is mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah. And I didn't know how to react in this photography business either. So just yeah. let things kind of happen in that sense. And, um, when it comes, it, it comes, comes, right? You can't really control every situation and mm -hmm. can't really think that it's not going to work out. And it's just like mm -hmm. another kid, right? You have to, whatever happens, happens. Mm. Okay, and just cool. live it. Yeah. I just don't want to be blamed as well. There is no perfect world. Like some sort of something right there's always gonna well, be that's something why i'm trying to address it now i don't you're saying yeah. oh it's okay for me to blame you in the future if i get mad like no that's why i'm addressing it right now yeah you can address all <laughs> you want and be prepared as much as possible but i'm not i'm not predicting the future for you yeah. i'm just going to tell you right well that's why i'm saying we're human hey, beings hey, and it's you, going to happen can you in your own mind say yeah. i will try yeah in my, I will, yeah. You know, I will address this feeling of like a tendency to blame somebody else if something doesn't work out. Yeah. That's what I'm like. Are you going to do that shit? Or is it going to be like we never had the conversation? Well, and we then definitely. If it fails, it's like. Well, we're talking about it now. We're bringing awareness now versus before we never brought any awareness. So we definitely are aware 
of how to communicate properly to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not the first rodeo. It's like the fourth rodeo. <laughs> it's like the millionth rodeo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and when, by the time I, I guarantee we are definitely wiser <laughs> yeah. of starting something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm going to make some soap. Oh, yeah. You want me to make soap. <laughs> Tell me about your soap. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I had some ideas, right? But mm-hmm. so, yeah, I always like the molten brown scent. It, it, it has a really nice fragrance. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sticks, right? Mm-hmm. When, when you're like just walking, it sticks. So it's pretty cool. You mean it stays on you? Yeah, it stays on <laughs> your skin. Uh, <laughs> stick it on you. Stick a, it sticks on you. Stick a glade. <laughs> it's like what? a big old block right here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was thinking of like with activated charcoal and how, how that's a thing of uh, like a, it's a natural anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. So um, getting at activated charcoal with a... Uh, uh, some essential oils like bergamot that we always like or sandalwood, mm-hmm. uh, mixing the two together or different uh, proportions. And I remember we made all this mm-hmm. like grid that will put 10% this, 10% that, anything that equals up to 100% and yeah. see how the smell would like. We did make soap, but I don't think we put enough like you said, mm-hmm. but we it. It did form into like an ice cube, which was cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, at least we attempted it. That was a cool thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, activated charcoal with, uh, I was just thinking grinding coffee and just placing in there to use it as like a cool exfoliator. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all organic. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And probably put like, just using all of our resources that we have in this house like you're put a bunch of shit in there. so you grown uh <laughs> so you grown like a lavender yeah. like out in the backyard as well as mint leaves uh-huh. um so i was thinking You're just putting a pesticide <laughs> <laughs> want some pesticides so. <laughs> it still smells good right no you can't use that oh. this thing is toxic all right all right <laughs> that'd be hilarious yeah <laughs> Here, have my pesticides. <laughs> GMO. <laughs> um, yeah. But cool, guys. Yeah, that's our show for today. <laughs> I feel so loopy. So it was about rejection. Yeah, to like fine tuning your living space to make it comfortable, a working, like a comfortable working environment. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay to uh your fears of starting something new your Mm -hmm. passion project yeah yeah yep that's it that's it (laughs) okay thank you guys for tuning in all right see you pass the aisle and see you guys next time bye